The Yellow Turban Rebellion was a Taoist rebel movement that flared up among the common folk in the year 184 AD. Zhang Zhui, also known as Zhang Jiao, and his younger brothers Zhang Bao and Zhang Liang initially incited their 360,000 followers to bring down the corrupt Han government. It's recorded that come the end of the rebellion, there were around 2 million yellow turbans, and the death toll reached somewhere between 3 to 7 million. The brothers were founders of a Taoist and somewhat shamanistic religious sect where they provided spiritual healing services to the common people, free of charge. Through their practices, they could see how under Han rule the people were overworked and underfed, which drove them to rise up against their masters. The corruption within the Han government had been repeating for generations by now. At the age of 12, Liu Hong was suggested to become Emperor Ling for unknown reasons by an influential assistant to Empress Do Miao, the royal regent of the time. His early reign had her rule on his behalf, until her father and another important Han official looked to purge the eunuch faction from the government. They failed in their mission, which led to the eunuchs Tao Zhi and Wang Fu replacing them as the two most powerful officials, whereafter they destroyed the rest of the Do clan. Emperor Ling and Empress Do were then placed under house arrest by the eunuchs, under the guise of it being for their protection. At the age of 13, the eunuchs convinced the emperor that the supporters of the Confucian movement were out to get him. The Confucians were then removed from office, but the eunuchs went on to have over a hundred of them executed, which forced the rest into hiding. An underground network provided shelter for them under anonymous leadership at the time, but was later revealed to have involved Yuan Shao and Kong Rong. The turmoil within the Han Empire went on throughout the years. A vandal once slandered the eunuchs by writing on the palace gate, causing thousands of arrests and a false accusation that led to the execution of an entire family, including the children. The Xi'an Bei tribes also scored a major victory against the Han armies around this time, which led to increased taxes and further burdened the common folk. On another occasion, the eunuchs feared the influence of the aunt of Emperor Ling's wife, and so convinced Emperor Ling that she was using witchcraft to curse him, so he had her imprisoned, where she died of despair whilst her family were all put to death. As Emperor Ling grew older, he took almost no action against the eunuchs, and allowed their corruption to continue. He even referred to the leader of the eunuch faction, Zhang Rang, as his foster father. In the year 178, at 22 years old, the emperor seemingly encouraged corruption by selling off political offices for money, he even allowed the buyers to pay in instalments if they could not afford it initially, which obviously led to widespread corruption on a whole new level. Two years later, he met Lady He, whose family, according to legend, bribed the eunuchs to specifically select her out of the candidates to be allowed into the emperor's harem. She was made an empress after she birthed the emperor a son named Liu Bian, who went on to become Emperor Xiao. As Emperor Ling was fond of creating gardens, his projects became more expensive as time went on, which led to him fragrantly spending money on lavish projects. He demanded a direct tribute from all commanderies to do so. This increased the strain on the people even more, as government officials struggled to afford the new costs. Things had gone from bad to worse with no sign of any improvement. The lands were also struck by natural disasters, which in accordance to the mandate of heaven dictates that the emperor was losing faith with the gods and that his time was coming to an end. Those affected by the disasters were forced to move south, where the peasantry were exploited even more, and life was much more difficult. This led to an increase in activity amongst gangs and bandits, some of which eventually grew into private armies. In the year 184, Zhang Zhui gave himself the grand title of Great Teacher, and also proclaimed himself as General of Heaven. Zhang Bao was named General of Earth, and Zhang Liang was titled General of the People. Zhang Zhui, who was believed to be a sorcerer by many at the time, began their movement by reciting a slogan to their patients every time they carried out their healing practices. The azure sky is already dead. The yellow sky will soon rise. When the year is Jiazi, there will be prosperity under heaven. Jiazi is the first year of a cycle within the traditional Chinese method of recording time, which would occur in the year 184. Shang Zhui sent his followers to write Xiazi so everyone can see it in white talc everywhere and anywhere they could, especially on any government or imperial property. 
Shang Shui's gatherings would involve many different activities that he practiced to heal, such as music, communal activities, group confession, dancing, trances, fasting, incense burning, sermons, or even storytelling. He didn't discriminate against the so-called barbarians of the time, and happily welcomed anyone to join his movement. Several Xiong new leaders had lent their support towards him. As to them, he appeared to have a direct link to the heavens. Shang Zhui predicted the downfall of the Han government and the emergence of a new greater one to his people, which greatly increased his popularity. As his movement spoke of and prepared for war, its members donned yellow scarves around their heads to symbolise their allegiance. Shang Zhui then employed 36 commanders to lead his armies and set up a shadow government in which to organise his faction. Shang Zhui set April 184 as the date to start the rebellion, and sent Ma Yuan Yi to gather many yellow turbans from Jing and Yang provinces, then to lead them all to Yi. Ma Yuan Yi would often visit the capital, where he had built up relations with two of the eunuchs there, who agreed to lend their support when the time comes. There was another founding member of the Way of Peace, but he had been left out of the yellow turban movement by Shang Zhui and his brothers, and so sought revenge by reporting Ma Yuan Yi to the guards which led to his arrest, execution, and dismemberment the next time he entered Luoyang. As Emperor Ling was now aware of their presence, he launched an investigation into their movement where hundreds were arrested and executed. Two months prior to when Zhang Zhui had initially planned his rebellion, he discovered the imperial forces were searching for him. He immediately sent messengers to the pockets of yellow turbans throughout China to take action right now. For the next 10 days, he led his 360,000 followers to various towns and villages, attacking government offices and seizing commanderies. But the sheer volume of his undisciplined soldiers meant that many innocent buildings were also pillaged. Shang Zhui and his brothers led the bulk of the Yellow Turban Rebellion from near where they grew up in Ji province. Many more uprisings sprouted out throughout China during the next two months up until April 184, when Emperor Ling appointed his brother-in-law, He Jin, as the general-in-chief of the Han Imperial Army. He Jin was tasked with supervising the armies led by Liu Ji, Huang Fu Song, and Xu Jun, as they suppressed the rebellion. In Yeo province, the rebels had killed an administrator and the inspector, so a Han colonel named Zhu Jing had a small force to eliminate them, where he was thankful to receive the assistance of a volunteer force led by Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei. Wang Yun was put in charge of overseeing the military affairs in Yu province. There was a unique princedom ruled by Liu Chong within this province that was allowed to maintain its own territory. Liu Chong already had a formidable reputation as an archer. Once he had heard of the yellow turban activities, he prepared an elite archer unit. He then fortified his position and was completely unscathed throughout the yellow turban rebellion. Also, for the next decade or so, his princedom became a safe haven for many refugees. Whilst Zhu Jun was marching to relieve Yu province, the administrator of Runan was forced to fight Bo Kai and his yellow turbans with no army. Seven officials under him with minimal military skills armed themselves with swords and fought with honour against the mass of yellow scarves but ultimately stood no chance of victory. When Zhu Jun did arise, he was driven back by the rebels but was later reinforced by Huang Fu Song and Tao Tao who, with his cavalry unit, was able to greatly assist in driving the enemy back. Tao Tao remained behind, whilst Huang Fu Song and Zhu Jun pursued and killed Bo Kai, before splitting up to pacify the rest of the areas. Whilst these battles were being fought, Wang Yun uncovered evidence that the eunuch Zhang Rang had been colluding with the Yellow Turbans this whole time. At the outbreak of the rebellion, one of the eunuchs, Zhang Jun, had previously wrote to Emperor Ling urging him to execute the corrupt eunuchs and to announce far and wide that their crimes have been punished to settle the common people's anger. When the emperor confronted the other eunuchs with his memorial, they all pleaded and vowed to donate their wealth to the cause of suppressing the rebellion. Their deceit and lies tricked the emperor, whereafter he sarcastically asked Zhang Jun, Are there no good ones amongst the ten attendants? Zhang Jun filed the same recommendation at a later date, but this one mysteriously never made it to the Emperor's office. It was when the Emperor had earlier ordered an investigation into the Yellow Turban movement that Zhang Rang bribed them to frame Zhang Jun, whose following imprisonment, torture and death ended his interference with the other eunuch schemes. 
When the Emperor eventually learned of Zhang Rang and the other eunuchs' involvement with the Yellow Turbans, he had two of them executed, but merely scolded Zhang Rang and let him continue his business as usual. As law and order was not upheld within the Imperial Court, Wang Yun was forced to flee to the countryside, but later returned after Zhang Ran had passed away. The rebels in Jing province, led by Zhang Mancheng, had killed an administrator and seized the commandery's capital. The administrator's replacement had rallied the local regiments and managed to clear the area before Zhu Jun's imperial army arrived. Xiao Hong then took over command of the Yellow Turban forces, but was defeated once the Han subjects learned of his position and combined their armies to over 18,000. Han Zhong then took over and fled with his followers to Wancheng City to seek shelter. Xu Jun set his army up poised to attack from one direction, while secretly entering the city with 5,000 men from the opposite direction, whilst also initiating a siege. Han Zhong was terrified and wanted to surrender to Xu Jun, but he didn't accept his offer. Xu Jun pretended to fall back, which drew Han Zhong out of the city's citadel and like lambs to the slaughter into Xu Jun's imperial army. Han Zhong fled from this battle, but was eventually caught, so he again offered his surrender. This time it was accepted, but it didn't guarantee his safety, so Colonel who served under Zhu Jun for whatever reason hated Han Zhong, and so had him executed anyway. In Xu province, Imperial forces under Dao Xian, along with Zhang Ba, managed to bring peace to their area without any need of assistance. Sun Jian, who currently resided in Xu, and a handful of capable warriors had come from this area and signed up with Zhu Jun to assist against the Yellow Turbans. In Yang province, the rebels had set fire to many buildings, but the administrator of Lu Jiang commandery had recruited able-bodied men to put out the fires and went on to restore peace to that region by himself as well. In Ji province, Lu Ji had taken the fight to Zhang Jue and successfully pushed his main force back where he began to lay siege to them. Shang Shui must have sent a secret letter to his eunuch allies, as one of them falsely accused Lu Xi of treason, which had him removed from his position and recalled back to the capital as a prisoner. Dong Zhuo replaced Lu Xi on the front lines, but failed to make any progress with the siege and retreated. Huang Fu Song had made his way to the area by now, and just defeated 7,000 rebels and their leaders, so was asked to take command of Dong Zhuo's men to go back and finish off Shang Zhue. In the coming battle, Zhang Zhui passed away from illness, but his brother Zhang Liang took over and inspired his men to fight harder, which prevented Huang Fu Song from overcoming their position. Huang Fu Song feigned that he was giving up and withdrew slightly to set up a defensive position. This caused the Yellow Turbans to lower their guard that evening, and they weren't expecting Huang Fu Song to come charging back in the middle of the night. He completely destroyed their resolve, found and killed Zhang Liang, along with some 3,000 of his followers. Another 50,000 are said to have died as they swam for their lives across the river. Once the battle had died down, the family members of the rebels were rounded up and captured. Their belongings and supply carts were all set alight, and Huang Fu Song had Zhang Zhui's deceased body dug up, cut into pieces before sending his head back to the capital. At some point in the next month or so, after Huang Fu Song was promoted for his deeds, he returned to Xi province to put down the last remaining brother, Zhang Bao. This battle was more of a slaughter, where after Huang Fu Song received the surrender of over a hundred thousand rebels. Xu Jun's recapturing of Wan Cheng and Huang Fu Song's victories in Xi marked the end of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, although pockets of activity would pop up in the coming years, such as the White Wave Bandits. Many Yellow Turbans would find themselves coming to serve under Tao Tao, as his reformative policies regarding the government were very popular amongst the Taoist movement. It's mentioned he happily took them in and their families and formed a special military unit out of their best warriors. The Han government's infrastructure was severely damaged after these uprisings. Many government structures, offices, documents and officials had been lost that left many positions of power open for the taking. The troops and commanders that were deployed from Liang province contributed greatly to suppressing the Yellow Turban Rebellion, which gave them a feared reputation throughout the empire. This led to them feeling superior to the other armies, and eventually looked down on the soldiers from all other provinces. Entire regions of land were now disconnected from the Han central government, which ushered in a new age of chaos. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.